We begin in the Middle East, where a growing rift between the Israeli military's top brass and Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has now spilled out in the open. Reports say the leadership in the Israeli army has different plans for the war in Gaza. The Israeli military's leadership reportedly wants a ceasefire in Gaza, even if Hamas is not completely removed from the Strip. The generals believe that a permanent ceasefire would be the quickest way to free the remaining hostages that are still being held captive by Hamas. However, Prime Minister Netanyahu is pledging to continue fighting in Gaza until Hamas is completely defeated. Unnamed officials are briefing the New York Times today. They say Israel will be willing to end the war before achieving all of its goals. I don't know who these unnamed officials are, but I am here to convey unequivocally that this is not going to happen. We will end the war only after we achieve all of its goals, including the elimination of Hamas and the release of all our hostages. The political echelon defined these goals to the IDF and the IDF has all the means to achieve them. We do not give in to the winds of defeat, not in the New York Times and not anywhere else. We are imbued with the spirit of victory. Now reports further state that the Israeli army is keen on stopping the Gaza offensive amid an ammunition shortage. This as it prepares for a military campaign toward the north against Hezbollah. Now the chief of Israel's armed forces dismissed the allegations of ammunition shortages and ordered his troops to prepare for the next phase of fighting. This is a long campaign because we do not want to leave Rafah with the infrastructure intact. When we move to the next phase, we will adapt appropriate measures for that phase, bring new tactics, provide logistical support in a different way that fits that phase. And all these things ultimately are focused by our determination, perseverance and patience, wearing down the other side and accomplishing our missions. Now, despite the initial halt in sending ammunition, the United States has begun the delivery of thousands of heavy-grade bombs to Israel. Now, this comes after Israel's Defense Minister Yoav Gallant visited Washington just last month, where he met with Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin and Secretary of State Antony Blinken. And now, Prime Minister Netanyahu will also visit the United States later this month, where he'll meet President Joe Biden and address the U.S. Congress. Now, White House officials have confirmed that the Israeli prime minister will be in Washington on the 24th of July. The meeting between President Biden and Prime Minister Netanyahu will come against the backdrop of Netanyahu accusing the United States of deliberately stalling Israel's offensive against Hamas by withholding the delivery of weapons and ammunition. However, it remains to be seen whether President Biden will in fact embrace Netanyahu's visit or raise the issue of Israel repeatedly ignoring Washington's concerns about the killing of innocent Palestinians in Gaza. On the 15th, the P20 World Cup run by the U.S. moved across to the West Indies more than you expect. Hello and welcome to First Post America. I'm Eric Hamm, coming to you live from the nation's capital, Washington, D.C.